Whilst working night shifts at a London hotel, getting paid less than the minimum wage, I was looking for any way out when I saw a random advertisement on Instagram for community workers in Bangladesh. Thinking it was way too good to be true, with flights, accommodation and a wage all included, I applied and then thought nothing of it. Fast forward two months, three assessment days and five days of intensive training, I found myself at Heathrow Airport. I'd been selected for a chance of a lifetime alongside eight other newly trained community workers from all four corners of the UK. We flew to New Delhi, the capital of India, then straight on to Dhaka, Bangladesh's capital. We would stay at a base in Dhaka, where we would undergo further training and meet our Bangladeshi counterparts. Together, we would be doing a language exchange and leading health workshops in rural villages across northern Bangladesh. This was also a chance to acclimatise to the 35 degree humid heat and get used to our new way of life. This included sleeping in mosquito nets, getting bitten by mosquitoes when we weren't in the net, and the food. Often, rice for breakfast, lunch and dinner, something I grew to love. After five days of training and team bonding, we headed eight hours north to our new home. Exhausted from the intense training, we slept for most of the journey. Although there was no mistaking, we had an armed police escort. Due to recent events prior to us landing in Bangladesh, the security risk had risen. And as Westerners, it was decided we needed armed police protection for our entire time in Bangladesh. They made us feel incredibly safe, but they were never needed and in the end became really good friends. Arriving at the compound, we found our rooms and the squat toilets, but we all got used to the bathroom set up really quickly. It was the lack of air conditioning, which was a really hard one to get used to. Next up, clothes. I'm not into fashion at all, as you'll know if you watch my YouTube channel, but shopping in Bangladesh is like nothing I've ever experienced before. There's no elbow bashing your way through Primark. It's hundreds of shelves filled with colourful fabrics made to measure. You then take the fabric to a tailor who creates the exact design you want, all for under $10. And if you end up doing this, getting a sour kameez, I would strongly recommend getting pockets. All clothed and ready to go, we started planning our health and safety workshops. The very reason we were there. To deliver information on everything from supporting child marriage victims to physical first aid. Driving to the rural locations was our first taste of tuk-tuk life. Bouncing our way down rocky roads and then getting stuck in the mud and pushing our way to the villages. Everything in Bangladesh was an adventure and I loved it. We delivered the workshops from everything, from small groups to whole villages. Being an introvert who normally shies away from public speaking, I thought I'd find it really difficult. But because I was delivering the workshops in Bengali, I was able to distance myself from the task as I was just so focused on getting the pronunciation right and I forgot all about all the staring people. And as the villagers started to engage more, the more I relished the chance to do these workshops. A few months in, we hit our stride as a team. Aside from our priorities, we took it upon ourselves to set up youth groups across the cities. We made sure they were self-sufficient with their own local leaders. So when we left, they could keep on running. Then everything changed. The world's fastest growing humanitarian crisis as thousands of Rohingya refugees are spending a fourth night stranded near the border with Bangladesh. Aid agencies are struggling to get help to millions of people affected by devastating floods across South Asia. More than 1,200 people are believed to have died. It's thought to be the worst monsoon season in decades, with tens of thousands of people forced from their homes in India, Nepal and Bangladesh. The Rohingya refugee crisis hit southern Bangladesh and life-threatening floods hit northern Bangladesh. The storms and floods were so severe we spent three days in our rooms, but this gave us time to react and plan. Our workshops were put on hold and we put all our time and efforts into creating essential supply packages for those affected by the floods and sending some to the south for the refugee camp. We worked non-stop and created thousands of bags. Thankfully, the floods subsided and charities stepped in to help with the ongoing Rohingya refugee crisis which still needs all the help it can get. And I've left some links down below of charities who are working tirelessly in that area. Eventually we went back to our workshops and using our downtime to explore the beautiful country. We motorcycled to the Indian border with the stunning mountains dividing two countries. The locals refer to Bangladesh as their beautiful land and I can see why. On arrival, I was so excited to see the wildlife, which didn't disappoint, but the landscapes were truly stunning. 
I'm never tired of staring at the tuk-tuk, at the endless mountains and rivers leading to tiny villages filled with some of the most kindest, most generous people I've ever met. We were invited to everything, from dance performances and birthdays to weddings. We were also asked to deliver local talks at schools about life back in the UK. But <laughs> if I'm honest, we just played and had fun. We were in Bangladesh to teach, but we learnt just as much, if not more, from the locals we met. When their fishing nets break, they can't order a new one from Amazon, they come up with ingenious ways to fix it. Aside from the people and the land, one of the best parts of my time in Bangladesh was the ability to be disconnected. We had no internet connection at our compound, you had to buy Wi-Fi from local stores, which I did twice during my entire time there. Once to FaceTime my nan on her 80th birthday, which I was really sad to be missing, and the second to let my mum know I'd been in hospital. A tiny little blip due to a blood infection, but I was absolutely fine. When my contract ended, I was nowhere near ready to come home, and I had a really hard time readjusting to life in England, especially as I arrived a week before Christmas. I also had no money and no job. But that's what led me to making this channel, something to focus on while I figured everything out. So I guess coming home wasn't all that bad, but I can't wait to go back.